Beloved, when God calls us as his people, he invites us to bear fruits. And when we bear fruits, God does something unexpected. He prunes us so that we can bear more fruit. If we understand that image, then we will make sense of the first reading and today's gospel. The first reading speaks of the house of Israel being the vineyard of the Lord. But when the time came, the vineyard did not produce good fruits. It produced sour fruits. And time after time, the Lord sent prophets to them, but still, somehow the vineyard did not respond to bear the fruits that the Lord desired. Jesus comes along and he sees the experiences of the people, and so he gives a parable. The parable is a story meant to teach truths of the kingdom and of God. And he shifts the understanding that believers, first of all, the house of Israel, and now all of us, we are no longer imaged as a vineyard, we are imaged as the workers. The workers to whom we must give an account to God for our stewardship. But you notice what happens in today's gospel, how they behaved. Were they happy as workers? Or did they allow their emotions to get to them? There's a Sufi saying, Happiness is not determined by what is happening around us. Happiness is determined by what is happening inside of us. If we understand and reflect on that saying, that statement, perhaps we can link it with today's gospel and our very lives. Three things regarding happiness and looking inside. The first is this, Jesus knows that we can be a stubborn people. He knows very well that people sometimes are not happy and therefore, since they are not happy, they do not produce the good fruits that he, the Father, and the Holy Spirit expects from all of us. And so he promises his disciples first of all and then to the entire church, that he will pour his spirit upon us. In other words, beloved, we are not empty vessels, but according to scripture, we, you and I, are temples of the Holy Spirit. And so if we look within to the presence of God in and through the Holy Spirit, that is where our true happiness and peace will lie. What is Jesus pointing to? Ultimately, he's saying this, The kingdom of God is about relationship. Relationships are what should color us as God's people. For Jesus says, if you are to save your life, love God with everything and love your neighbor as yourself, and we'll break that down in a minute. If we learn how to do that, then we will understand the concept of what it means to be in relationship with God by looking within to the presence of the Holy Spirit. But here's a certain truth, beloved. I often share with you, we cannot give what we do not have. As we reflect on our country, and dare I say now the world because of globalization and the relevance of information, is a certain truth that we must face up to. That children who grew up in the presence of a loving mother and father, and therefore have that foundation of love, you are among the minority who are blessed. Because having looked and examined at our society and the world, we see more and more that many are growing up without the presence of a mother and father. Which means that these children, if they pay attention, will have to rely more and more on the presence and power of God in their lives. The other reality is this, people, are finding it more and more difficult for whatever reason to be in relationship with each other. What's the evidence? So many marriages going asunder. So many relationships breaking off. And part of the root problem is by growing up with that lack in the beginning or because of the experience of brokenness, people no longer trust each other. 
And so what we have is believers in any church, in any denomination, who struggle to understand the concept of a relationship. How can you and I give to God what belongs to God if too many are not yet solidified in our relationship with Him? How can you and I give to each other what they deserve if you and I are not in relationship with each other? Can someone truly say, I see the Holy Spirit working in your life when they encounter you? Jesus calls us to answer the question, is my relationship with God as solid as it should be? Not just because I say it, not just because I find myself in Mass sitting in a pew, but can others see that my relationship with my God is as solid as it should be? And for me to answer that, I must look within. For when I look within, it brings out the second truth. That being a people who are called to be in relationship with God in and through the Holy Spirit present in our lives, this God says, are you paying attention to my word? Notice what the workers did. Each time someone was sent to them to collect what was due to the owner, they gathered together. And rather than uplift each other, what did they do? They plotted. Let us beat one, stow on another, kill the third, drive away anyone that comes to us, and in the end, here comes the son. Let us kill him. Not one voice was able to rise above the voice of the crowd because all were in collusion with each other. When we pay attention to the word of God, that word leads to life. And so one way of discerning whether the word that we are allowing to be planted in our hearts and minds is of God or of the devil is, do my words and actions bring life to and for the other? Because where it brings stoning and beating and driving out and death, that is exactly what the devil wants. And the only way we can discern what is of the word of God and what is of the word of darkness is to feed on his word. My words are spirit, says the Lord. So already the spirit is interacting with his word. And my words are life. This word of God that we should reflect on and ponder like Mary, our blessed mother, it should help us in such a way that people will say, I see the word of God active in your life. Can one spouse say that of another spouse? I see you conforming your life to the word of God. Can a child say of a parent, I see you conforming your life to the word of God. Can friends say to each other, thank God for your growth because I see you responding to what God wants. These are all questions we can only answer if and when we look within. Which then leads to the third and final point. Scripture says, you will know them by their fruits. When the vineyard was bearing sour grapes, Jesus had to change the image. When the workers are no longer responding to the landowner, now the question must be asked, what fruits are being born? And we can only bear fruits for the kingdom if it starts with one particular concept. Do I truly love myself? And therein lies the problem for many of our people. When we experience brokenness in and through others, beloved, as we will, that is not the time to get angry with them or criticize them. That's the time to pray for them. Because guess what? Every believer is called to represent Christ to the other. When the believer fails to represent Christ to the other, the fault does not lie with Jesus. The fault lies with the believer who has his or her personal struggles. And the same thing is true for all of us who are called to bring the love of Christ to and for the other. When we fail to encounter love in the other, pray for the other because they are showing the lack of love that they are unable to respond to. Chances are because of their history 
or because they have things to work out with God. When I learn how to love myself, that is when I can love others. You notice what Jesus says? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. So how can I love my neighbor if many of our brothers and sisters are struggling to love self? But when we understand that we can love ourselves despite our failures and lack and history, because the presence of the Holy Spirit allows me to look within, then I will remember that by being in relationship with Him, that is when I will bear fruits for the kingdom. I challenge you, beloved. Is there any who is unhappy? Is there any who lacks peace? Is there any who lacks joy? Perhaps the problem is we are looking too much outside and not looking within. For if we dare to look within, we may celebrate some of the things we find. We may ask for grace and strength to face and overcome the other things that we will discover. But in the end, God calls us all to be in relationship with him so that we can bear fruits that will last for his eternal kingdom. As you and I continue the journey of life, beloved, do not look to the others except to God for your happiness and joy and peace. That comes first and foremost from being in relationship with him and loving self. When we learn then how to do that, that is when we can pass on what we will have through the power of the Spirit, God's love, God's mercy, and God's peace. To him, beloved, be glory and praise forever and ever.